Welcome to the Rookie Corner blog for this week. This is the fundamental wrap. What we're talking about here is fundamental analysis. We've gone through the concepts. We know what we're looking for. Essentially, fundamental analysis is just the comparison of one company versus another to try and determine whether uh, it can handle you know, its, its current climate and the foreseeable future as well. So we've talked about the metrics, and we're going to talk about them a little bit further, and then we're actually going to go through uh, how we look at these things and how we how we glean this information, and then we're going to compare two companies and see how it turns out. So uh, welcome to the video blog this week. Uh, a little something different, uh, some actual practical uses here for fundamental analysis, and this is pretty much going to end it, and then we're going to get into the technical analysis, which is uh, a very important part of trading. And uh, it's going to take you from being a rookie to, uh, you know, to, to your first trade or at least uh, getting into that realm. So so first up, uh, fundamental analysis, we talked about the talked about the price to earnings ratio. So price to earnings ratio, P.E. ratio, as they call it, is the price is what you pay and equity equity is what you get or the value. So we use this to determine you know, whether it's a good time to buy a particular company or not, uh, you know, if you've got a really high PE, uh, chances are you're paying a lot for earnings and, and that's not always the best thing. So we want to compare similar companies uh, to find out which one's best. Uh, next up is the PEG ratio, price earnings growth. So price is what you pay, equity is get what you get plus the growth. Now, the interesting thing about uh, the, the PEG ratio is growth is a projection. Now, when we look into the actual practical part of this, you're going to see that it's a five-year projection that they give us. The problem with that is, is it's just a projection. Uh, nobody knows what the climate will be over the next five years, so it's it's a bit subjective. So we have to keep that in mind. Debt to equity ratio, very important. It's what they owe versus what they earn. Uh, if you find that a company's got a ton of uh, debt and their you know equity, their earnings is not good. Uh, you know, or even what they've got, uh, you know, in the company itself, that can uh, be a bit of a red flag. And, and fundamentally speaking, that can show some weakness. So we need to take a look at that. Uh, the price to book earnings, uh, price to book ratio. Uh, basically, you take your stock to stock prices versus the book value of the business. Now, the issue with the book value, it's kind of like your car. Right. If you go to the black book or the blue book value uh, of what your car might be worth, well, you know what? That's also subjective. So, you know, price the book. It, it's it's a metric that we can use to determine, you know, kind of, uh, you know, what we're paying for the book value of the company. But the reality is, is it's also subjective. So we have to keep that in mind. Free cash flow. So this is a very important thing. You know, should things go bad? You know, maybe the economy takes a turn. How long can they survive? How much money do they have waiting there uh, to back them up should should the marketplace change? Free cash flow is very important. Uh, payout ratio. So this is the dividend payout ratio. The, the, the only question with the payout ratio is can they keep the payout going long term? Uh, you know, that we have to look at a couple of the things for. You know, one of the things is about fundamental analysis is, you know, all of these things that we've talked about, all these metrics here that we're talking about, they can be somewhat subjective to a small degree. Um, you know, I'm not saying they're, they're fictitious by any stretch, but they're definitely subjective parts to each one of these. And so the payout ratio, you know, we, we got to look at that and we got to see, you know, if they're paying uh, more than they're taking in, uh, can that be sustained over the long term? You know, that's what we want to check out. So we definitely got to check out the payout ratio. All right, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to have the age-old debate, which is better, Coke versus Pepsi. So we're actually going to uh, we're actually going to compare these two. I'm going to go through the numbers here that I've got, and then I'll show you how we got these numbers, and then we'll make a decision at the end. All right, all right, Coke versus Pepsi, right on. Let's do this. I'm sure we have people on all sides right now. All right, so Coke versus Pepsi. If we look their PE, the Coke ratio, the PE ratio is 48. 0.52 versus Pepsi's, which is 22.83. So what that means is if we want to buy Coke, we got to pay $48.52 for every $1 of earnings versus Pepsi. We only got to pay $22.83 versus earnings. So in this particular case, if we just looked at PE ratio, Pepsi would be the better buy. However, we cannot just take one metric. 
we got to look at a lot of them. So we look at the peg ratio, Coke versus Pepsi, 4.74 versus 3.28. This tells us that Coke has uh, at least the expectation of better growth going forward. So again, we have to compare all these metrics, right? Uh, debt to equity. So this is very interesting. So debt to equity. These numbers come out as a percentage, and we have to take this into consideration because this is this is how aggressive a company can be uh, when when trying to earn, uh, you know, trying to accumulate assets. Okay, so you know this 225% number and 292%. This tells us that Pepsi is a little more aggressive trying to get their accumulate their assets as opposed to Coke is. You know, these high numbers like this can be kind of scary. Uh, you know, you, you want you want to make sure that they're using their debt wisely and we can look deeper into those numbers. But, uh, you know, from from a standpoint here, it seems like Coke's a little bit more conservative than Pepsi. Price to book. So, you know, uh, Coke versus Pepsi, even though the P.E. ratio is very high. You know, the price to the book value for Coke is less than Pepsi. So it seems it would seem that uh, Coke's a better bargain. Again, we have to take all these metrics into consideration. All right. Free cash flow. This is a big deal. OK, this is what's going to get, you know, any companies through rough times, you know, uh, market crashes, uh, you know, changing consumer sentiment, all these things. This is what gets them through there. This is the, the protection factor. So both of these companies are sitting on, well, $5.66 billion of free cash flow versus $6.12 billion for Pepsi. So these, both these companies have a lot of cash and they can weather the, uh, you know, any coming financial storms. All right. Now payout ratio. This is, this is a bit of a big deal here. Um, payout ratio. So it says here that uh, the payout ratio is a percentage, 140%. Uh, payout for Coke versus a 64, almost 65% payout for Pepsi. Now, long term, you know, the payout ratio is, is a, pro, a product of your earnings. Okay. So, or sorry, not earnings, net income. So if you're paying out 140% of your net income uh, for the long term, that's going to be tough to do. Now, of course, Coke is sitting on a mountain of cash, so they can get away with this for a while. But should this uh, payout ratio persist, then, uh, then we need to, to, to keep an eye on that. 65% uh, for Pepsi. It's, you know, if they're putting out 65% of their uh, net income into dividends, then, uh, you know, that is probably sustainable in that, in that space. All right. Now we got to look at the intangibles. This is a big deal, right? Intangibles are probably the most important part. These are the things that can't be fudged. These are the things that can't be uh, manipulated. These are the things that, that really, you know, uh, give us a fundamental, uh, good, good standing, if you will. So Coke versus Pepsi, how much cash are they actually sitting on? Okay. So the cash that they actually have in place is eight and a half billion dollars for Coke versus $9.1 billion for Pepsi. These two companies have a ton of cash that, uh, that they can, you know, work, work with. Okay, so that last cash number, the levered free cash flow, you know, that's that's their cash flow after all their expenses are taken care of. This here cash is just money that they're sitting on that they have to go to work with. Okay, this this is the rainy day fund, if you will. Overall assets minus liabilities. This is like a household, right? If you have more debt than you have, uh, you know, sorry, if you have if you have more liabilities than you have assets, then Anybody knows that if you look at your own balance sheet, if a household has more liabilities than assets, chances are they're in trouble. Chances are they're in debt, and uh, that can be a problem. With these two entities here, we can see Coke is uh, plus 20, 23 billion, uh, meaning they have 23 billion more assets than they do liabilities, and uh, Pepsi has uh, 11 billion more assets than they do liabilities. So both of these companies are in good standing. Okay, now. Dividend history. This is the one thing that you can't really you can't really fudge a, a dividend. Okay, so if a company's paying you a dividend, it means that they're making money. And if you get uh, you know consecutive dividend increases like we have here, uh, Coke for 54 years in a row and Pepsi 45 years in a row, this tell you tells you that this company is doing well. You know, if you think of all the things that have happened economically in the last 50 years. 
Uh, both of these companies have been able to increase their dividend every year through, you know, several market crashes, uh, some wars, uh, the oil crisis in the 70s. You know, there's been a lot of things go on, and yet these companies have still been able to crank out profits. So th this uh, this kind of shows us that uh, they're they're able to do these things. Okay, and the last intangible is branding. Okay, so iconic brands. You know, when you're looking for a fundamental uh, score kind of thing, if you have a brand, it it's it, it it gives a lot of weight to the product itself, which gives a lot of weight to the actual company itself. You know, like I said, Coke versus Pepsi, you can go anywhere in the world and people know what Coke and Pepsi are. Uh, no question about it, both iconic brands. So kind of kind of even there. All right, so these are the numbers. We won't go through who the winner is just yet. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go and I'll show you how I got these numbers. We'll actually do a practical example. All right, so let's go through this. So right off the bat, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to Yahoo Finance, okay? So we go to Yahoo Finance and we put in our symbol here. We'll start with Coca-Cola. We'll search for Coca-Cola. We've got to go to the quote lookup right up. So it comes up here, and the first thing it gives us here is a list of things here. So where we find out our data is the first thing we do is click on the statistics. All right, so we stick, click on statistics here. This is where we can get all our information to, uh, to compare the two companies. We can get our forward PE. Uh, we can get our peg ratio, your price to book. Uh, you can get, if you keep going down further, you can get your uh, payout ratio down here, 140%. Uh, you know, you can get your total cash over uh, most recent quarter. There's a lot of stuff here. Now, levered free cash flow is $5.66 billion. This is the, the, the cash flow. This is the money that's left over after all the obligations are paid. Okay, so that's a big deal. Uh, if, if you're sitting here on a mountain of cash uh, and you've got, uh, you know, you, you over after all your debts are paid, you still got a bunch of money kicking around. That means that fundamentally you're pretty solid. Okay, so we can check out that. And then obviously you can see here that they do an easy comparison. We can click over to Pepsi and we can see the same things, okay? Now, all those numbers that I went through, uh, I've already taken down, put into the PowerPoint there so you can all see them. But this is where you go to get this information, okay? You got your peg ratio 3.9, your forward PE in 1973, uh, your trailing PE, all of those different things. Again, there's a lot of information here. You know, payout ratio 64% as we talked about. You know, all of these things. And again, the biggest ones here are the cash. We got the levered key free cash flow. This is after all obligations. You know, you're sitting here with a bunch of cash. That's, that tells you fundamentally this company is strong. Now, there's one other place that we got to go uh, to take a look at some things here. You know, we've got the income statement. We can see, you know, how they're doing overall. Uh, you know, if they're increasing or if they're decreasing, you can see where, where things are going. Uh, money like operating expenses, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can see that on the income income statement here. Uh, the big one here is the balance sheet. If we go to the balance sheet, we can see revenue uh, versus, uh, you know, sorry, assets versus liabilities. So we can see here that, you know, total assets is 74 billion versus 63 billion in total liabilities. There's where your, you know, your extra 11 billion comes for Pepsi. Okay, it tells you about uh, the stock and all the rest of that stuff, but mainly assets minus liabilities. That's uh, that's simple, you know, rich dad kind of math. If you have more assets than you have liability, and your assets make money, then uh, you're usually in good standing. Okay, so this is the place where we find out all those information, and you just want to try to compare two similar companies, and Pepsi and Coke definitely fall into that. Okay, so once we've compared those metrics, again, like I said. Some of those metrics are, are subject to uh, interpretation, but the next part that we look at is not subject to uh, interpretation, okay? If you go to dividendinvestor.com and you throw in your ticker symbol here, we'll throw in Coke. You click go here, you get a wealth of information here, and this is, wh this is where the stuff is most important. All right, so look at the dividend information for Coke. Scroll down a little bit here. Not too far. Tell us what the dividend yield is, 3.25%. Uh, 
Uh, dividend all-star ranking here. We'll show you that uh, that metric in a minute. But here's the, one of the most important factors: dividend consecutive dividend increases of 54 years. That tells us that Coke is a rock star company. It's very fundamentally sound, and you can't fake this. Either they increase their dividend or they don't. And this particular website actually tracks this for us. Now, the, the all-star ranking, if you look down here, you can see here that they give you a little legend. So just to get a five-star rating, you have to have 20, over 20 years of consecutive dividend increases. And in this particular case, we definitely have that. You know, And the other part of this that, that's very important, this information, uh, they paid dividends since 1893. So all the stuff that's happened since 1893, the, this company has continued to pay dividends over and over again. Fundamentally, this is a rock star, star uh, uh, company for sure. Does that mean we don't need to, need to uh, compare it? No, that's not what it means. It just means that they're doing quite well and they've got a history. They've got lots of money behind them as well. You can check their uh, revenue, net income, cash flow, all of that stuff, your PE ratios, all that stuff can be found here. And uh, this is how you do your comparison. You just compare apples to apples. So, you know, if we go to uh, put Pepsi in here, we can see the same thing. As I showed you guys the numbers already. Click into Pepsi. Again, so a smaller dividend yield, you're just less than 3% there. And uh, you got your dividend all-star ranking. You got 45 years, and they've paid dividends since 1952. Uh, again, you've got all of this stuff here, debt to equity ratios, all that stuff. So the reality is, it's again, very solid fundamental company. And you can see that from this information. Okay. So back to our PowerPoint here. So intangibles we talked about. So the reality is, the winner is. So the reality is both of these companies are fundamentally sound. They both have great brands that are recognizable around the world. They have mountains of cash and are both on solid footing and ready to deal with whatever the economy can throw at them. You know, you're going to find some companies that when you start comparing them, you know, they're not going to they're not going to act quite the same way. They might not have the dividend history. Basically, you're just trying to compare similar companies to see which one shakes out as the better company. The key to fundamental analysis is to sure, ensure that a company will be around in the foreseeable future. Like a household, the company needs to bring in more than it, that's going out. Income versus expenses, very, very simple. And having a rainy day fund is super important, which we showed, you know, both Coke and Pepsi got, you know, well into the billions uh, of, of money just sitting there waiting to be uh, deployed when necessary. So. All right, that's the comparison of Coke versus Pepsi. There's no clear winner. As always, it's a matter of preference. You know, Coke's a $45 or $48 stock. Uh, Pepsi's a $102, $108 stock. You know, that, that can play into your, uh, uh, your investing. But the reality is fundamentally you want to make sure that things are sound and comparing all the metrics that we looked at and comparing the dividend history, uh, that will keep you in uh, companies that are, are good, solid footing, fundamentally speaking. All right. So that's the uh, wrap up for the fundamental. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next up on the docket next week will be our foray into technical analysis. So we found out the companies we want to buy. Now we got to find out when we want to buy. Happy trading.